I'm Dan Roberts from Super Sleeper, here today to talk about Super Sleeper. What is Super Sleeper? Super Sleeper is a composite material that is comprised of fibre reinforced polymer. Uh, essentially, it is a retaining wall solution. And everything that is post sleepers, um, fence brackets, top capping, and the likes, everything that would be your retaining wall solution. So Super Sleeper is perfect for just about any application when it comes to retaining walls. So civil subdivisions to the contractor that's doing a, a one meter high retaining wall for a residential client or for the DIYers who might want to be doing a, a raised garden bed as such. The advantages to using composite sleepers over concrete sleepers in short is financial. Um, what that consists of is basically a sleeper itself, uh, the, light, the lightweight nature of it is less than six kilos. So your typical concrete sleeper is around 75 kilos. So that within itself translate into massive financial savings when you consider the labor content, machinery content, logistic content, etc. Super sleeper is definitely more durable than concrete sleepers. Um, as I've uh, mentioned, it is an engineered solution. So when an engineer is involved with designing a retaining wall, in this case, a super sleeper wall, concrete sleeper wall, whatever it may be, must meet a 60 year design life, which these are most definitely capable of doing. So typical heights that you can build super, sleep, super sleeper retaining walls up to is 1.6 meters in height, uh, generally with a two meter spacing. You can build these higher than that. Um, in Queensland, anything over a metre in height must have an engineer involved and council certification. That engineer will obviously assess the soils that, we're actually, that you're actually drilling into and actually retaining, which then will actually dictate what you can do with this sleeper. So that might change the length of the bays, um, also incorporate what you're doing with your posts with pier depths and whatnot. The posts that we have on offer with Super Sleeper at the minute, um, they are suitable for up to a metre in height. Um, so what we're suggesting is anything there after a metre, use steel posts. We do have a, a larger section post coming. Uh, we just need to confirm some tests on that and then we'll be able to give that as an offering as well for walls higher than a metre. So any super sleeper retaining walls at the minute that require to be built larger than one metre in height. Um, although we have the posts that will suit up to one metre, we're suggesting that you use a steel post to accommodate for the greater heights. You can still use the Super Sleeper product itself, the sleeper itself. Um, we do have a larger section post that will be available really soon. So if you were to hit this product with uh, any machinery as such, um, you can expect to find some damage. No different to what you would find if you were to hit something hard enough, uh, with con yeah, whether it be a concrete sleeper, timber sleeper, uh, block wall, whatever it may be. If you hit that with a bucket of an excavator or a uh, bobcat or something along those lines, you can expect to see some damage, um, depending on how hard you hit it. Um, again, with that in mind, um, using a whipper snipper against this, absolutely fine. So it's not brittle or you know uh, subject to a lot of damage. If you hit it hard enough, you can expect damage. No different to any other product. So a sleeper weighs less than six kilos. So a 2.4 meter sleeper, less than six kilos. Two meter sleeper is actually less than five kilos. So a concrete sleeper, the equivalent lengths are anywhere from 75 to about 90 kilos. So there is a couple of cheap copies in the market, um, what the, the actual major difference is, is that this is an engineered solution. So the couple of copies that are out there in the market at the minute uh, are not engineered solutions. So they're only suitable for garden walls. And a garden wall can be conveyed as what would be anything up to a meter high that doesn't require engineering or council approval. So these are actually a engineered solution that do meet that 60 year design life when council approved and engineered. So aesthetically, this is how they come at the moment. Uh, we are working on some variations to what would be textures, colors, and what have you, but they're probably a little bit away away. 
However, what we've made sure can be done is that this product is very easily painted. So all it requires is just a light scuff with just like a medium grade sandpaper. Then you can apply an external paint to it straight to the face. So warranty on this product is 35 years. That being said, it must be correctly maintained. And by saying that, what I mean is the drainage system that's installed behind these retaining walls need to be correct. So, i.e. make sure that you engage a licensed, uh, appropriately qualified installer. Um, and then also, if this product does get excessive UV light, it might pay to paint the product. So with regards to excessive UV light, um, being that we're in Queensland, we can get a lot of harsh Queensland sun. So if this retaining wall was built, you know, exposed to quite a lot of actual sun, you can expect from, you know, probably around the 15 to 20 year mark, you'd find some aesthetic uh, imperfections to the face of it. Structurally, the sleeper will remain sound. However, you will end up with some imperfections to the aesthetics. What is suggested and men made mention of in our warranty documentation is that can be just solved by just a simple exterior paint that has UV resistant properties, uh, coloured or clear. Super Sleeper, when compared to other retaining wall solutions in the market, is head and shoulders above when, it consider when considering the financial aspect. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the financial aspect can consider can be considered by the installation method. So Super Sleeper doesn't require demo, demolition saws. Super Sleeper doesn't require two-man lifts. Super Sleeper doesn't require excavators to sling in sleepers. So take all that into consideration. The speed of installation is approximately about 30 to 40% faster than traditional methods, i.e. concrete sleepers or timber sleepers. Um, yeah. Okay, so a few reasons that uh, anybody would use this product for, for that matter. Number one, logistics. Um, it's a pretty easy one. I could ex you know, explain by the fact that these sleepers are less than six kilos. So you can imagine you could fit quite a lot on the back of your trailer or ute, or even the back of your small hatchback focus. Um, tight access projects. So they often pose quite a difficult nature when you consider that you can't get machines into them. Um, if you need to shuffle down the sides of houses with what would be a heavy sleeper, um, or boulders or blocks or whatever that matter. Um, you can carry a number of these at any point in time, you know, in one hit. So Super Sleeper is easily cut with just a circular saw with a timber cutting blade or a grinder with a cutting blade, even the drop saw. So safety aspects that you need to consider when using Super Sleeper, you want to make sure that you're wearing eye protection, face protection, and long sleeves with gloves. So you will find that you will get a minor irritation, and I do mean minor, when you're cutting this if you get it onto exposed skin. Super Sleeper is significantly easier to cut than it is to traditional concrete sleepers. Um, Concrete sleepers will require a demolition saw or a wet cut saw. Uh, not only that, you need, to be you need to consider the fact that you're exposing the reinforcement on a concrete sleeper when you've cut them and you need to make sure that you've protected them with the appropriate waterproofing. These, as I mentioned before, these can be just cut with a circular saw with a timber cutting blade, drop saw or a grinder with a cutting blade. Okay, we'll start off with the sleepers. So the sleepers are 200 mil in height Standard lengths are 2 metres and 2.4. Uh, you, you can expect a high level of consistency with those measurements when you receive these products. Um, one little handy advantage that Super Sleeper has is it's an actual tongue and groove system between each of the sleepers. So not only will you get consistency with the measurements, um, you'll actually get that very nice, neat finish as the wall's completed. Makes it easier for install too, because as you can imagine, they do, try it. they do sit quite tight as you're uh, constructing a wall with what be multiple sleepers in height. We've got posts as well. Uh, so we've got the H post. So these are typically used for intermediate posts. Again, as I mentioned before, these posts are typically used for up to one meter in height uh, and anything there below. We have the C posts as well. 
So these are used for corners or end posts. Again, up to a meter in maximum height, and anything there below. So C posts are typically used for corners and end posts. End post is pretty self-explanatory. They'll just finish as just a flush post like that. Uh, when you're talking corner posts or a 45 degree, whatever the angle it is that you're trying to achieve, you would use two of these C posts installed into the wet concrete footing to achieve the angle that you like. So they can either be bolted together prior to you actually putting them in within the footing, or you can just set them separately inside that footing with the appropriate sort of lean back that you require. So we've got uh, top capping that we've released recently, uh, and this is just basically to finish off those retaining walls that have an exposed top. Uh, when I say that, there is a lot of retaining walls that get built with a fence on top, so not necessarily required. So these top capping uh, are designed to sit flush over the top of the posts, which can be affixed at the front or the back of the post. Uh, when you reach your corners or uh, ends, you can miter the corners accordingly, as you would any timber top capping. When considering insulation with Super Sleeper, there's only a couple of things to consider um, that would be out of the ordinary, or when I say a couple of things, really only one. So that being the webbing of the bottom of the sleeper here. So on that bottom sleeper that you're installing, the concrete needs to come up and actually support the bottom of the webbing as opposed to just the edge of the sleeper. So we have installation drawings that are available that explains that further. As for everything else with how you construct the wall, typical to any other retaining wall, post and sleeper that is, uh, drainage needs to be you know, effective, um, pier depths, all as per what would be an engineered requirement. So with regards to, to elaborate further on what would be the installation method for the bottom sleeper, that concrete is to be submersed uh, underneath the actual webbing here, so it supports the webbing rather than the edge. We do have a product coming soon that is a support that's molded to suit the shape of that bottom sleeper that would do the job of that concrete that I've just made mention of. So traditionally with concrete sleepers, for example, uh, day one is about concreting and setting a pad to the height that you want for your sleepers. You could still do the same thing sit your support in place, then build your sleeper wall. 